All part of the, uh, the rough and tumble affair we had here. You wasted a little time, Brad, mowing the grass here in turn number one last yeah, week. Yeah, first nobody, heat race. Nobody paid me for that. And then I was like, no, what's it pay to mow the grass right? It's like 10, 15 bucks or something. At least. Right? At least. Minimum. But, uh, no, I got mowed the grass once. That's one out once over there. Then lost brakes one time. I had a heck of a night <laughs> last week. I don't know, can it get any rougher? We're going to find out. It gets, it gets rougher. It gets worse. It gets worse. <laughs> you know, so when I came here, you're just getting to know us. Everybody was telling me, like, hey, you know, this is the first week. Like, you've got to use this car for all six weeks. I'm like, ooh, I better take care of it. And then about five laps of the heat race, there wasn't a straight car out there. <laughs> Not one. So I think I might have told a story. No, it, it was, I have to say, I, I, I've been here for three years, and... It was a little bit over the top. It was over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Mine, mine had, was the cleanest it's ever been. How was that? I got out of here with all the fenders on. Normally I'm missing the bumper right in front of yeah, yeah. <laughs> Between I, Brett and I, I mean, I did it the entire back straight on the grass, grass too. too. So yes. we're, Where's our we're gonna open a, a new company. We're gonna <laughs> yeah. grow grasses for people. Yeah, I think the, 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 the track wasn't very happy this week, Tony. No, they were and they tweeted me and I said I was gonna come and fix it. And But look at this way. My hood fell off and now we're gonna give it away to one of them. Yeah. 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 What kind of race do you guys think we're gonna see here tonight? Star Paul. Uh, I mean, I think really more of the same. The cars, the cars this week uh, in practice were a lot better and faster than they were last week. Uh, it was a, a new tire last week. It's a radial tire. We used to run on a bias ply, so they didn't have the handling sorted out. They were better in the race, but this week the cars were, were pretty quick in practice and everybody was pretty fast. So, um, you know, I think it's going to be a lot more of the same. I think it's going to be, you know, to get by guys, you're going to have to use a bumper a little bit and move them out of the way a little bit. And uh, we're starting up front. So the goal is to get two good average finishes and, and be started towards the front for the main. Yeah, where, where are you starting? Third. Third. <laughs> yes. Last yes. race. Yeah, I, I've been uh, to the back with both races here so far, and, and it's hard because you know they get in that wrecks real early, and you got to try to navigate the wrecks. But uh, you know, I, I thought Newman had the best idea last week. He just ran the first two races, the heat race, and just got a new car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody would have told me that, I would have ran a lot differently. You know, I, my car was in pieces, and I didn't get a new car, so I guess you have to be Newman. <laughs> So we talk about Newman, but it was that 13th car that was fastest. Ryan Priest, the hometown hero. You guys were here last week. Do you feel you guys have an advantage? <laughs> no. Well, I hope I hope he doesn't spank us tonight because he's the, he's the local guy here. He he was actually last week giving giving everybody in our bus advice on what to do, and then and, um, he was he's obviously very quick around here. So he's gonna be he's gonna be tough to beat. Yeah, he's gonna, I think he's going to be the guy to be out. Where's he start? Is he starting like 11th or something? He's starting in the back. He is he's starting in the back. Yeah. That's good. We're trying to make it fair. For <laughs> it's just going to make it more exciting for you guys. So, you're welcome, guys. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm happy that I'm starting now so he doesn't have to pass me. <laughs> you're the only one who's got an excuse. I think, I think he's going to find it's, you know, like, you guys sat watching this on TV and you fans have come out and watched it. You guys have seen it. We, we race each other hard, but when we go to races and people that are watching on TV, the other guys we race uh, used to race against, they say, are you guys really racing that hard? Are you just out there screwing around and having fun? I'm like, no, these guys are running the shit out of each other. And <laughs> Right, Brad? You got knocked well, into the yeah, grass by the guy a half an hour earlier said, Hey, listen, yeah. I want everybody to take it easy. Be cool. Be calm. Let's not wreck these cars up. And then I like, the guy who's the, guy the who first the heat race of the year. Yeah. 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 No, I'm totally with you on that. Um, you know, that is just part of, somebody asked me what it was like. You know, I went back to an NASCAR garage at Loudon. People asked me what it was like. And I told them it reminded me a lot of when I went to the go-kart track and they had the rental carts. Slick track. Yeah, and then, they, you know, you ever go to a rental go-kart track and they put all the, the, the real drivers in and they just wreck everybody? <laughs> like, believe it or not, we are professionals. <laughs> Whatever I do, that I get thrown out. Yes. Just, yeah, well, you know, that's the problem is the guy who's supposed to throw us out is doing it. <laughs> all right, let's jump into some of the fun questions from some of our carters here on uh, Monday nights. Uh, one question that you guys are asked a lot and hate answering 
Oh, me? I uh, who's getting this first? Who can go first? Uh, I mean, hate. I mean, hate's a strong word. It is. There, there's no like that, There's always the one that I look at and kind of like, mm, which is the what do you do when you have to go? <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. And I don't know why they all look at me and ask that. Like, I, I like the, you guys get asked that same question. Yeah, well, they ask, yeah, if you have, do you ever go in the car? But yeah, I mean, we do get asked. I will say, uh, that, you what know, do you do when you have to go? <laughs> I, uh, I, don't know, I cannot go in the car. Me neither. I, the guys, seat picture this. Are too tight. Exactly. It picture hurts. this. You're sitting down. You have a six point sit belt, like tight. How, how can you? Like, <laughs> so earlier this year, I was in Atlanta and we were running a race, and it was cold. And you know when it's cold, like you, you gotta go. Especially because it's bumpy in the race cars and it's cold. And I was leading the race, and it was just a few laps to go. And I was like, oh, God, please just finish this race so I can get. So I finished the race. I got, I finished second. I got out of the car, and a bunch of people thought I was mad because I finished second because I got out of the car as fast as I could. And I ran to the porta potty. <laughs> and I only had to pee. It wasn't like anything real crazy. And another driver came in right behind me. I didn't lock the door or nothing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know how it is. Somebody said it sounds like it happens. You know, sometimes you just got to go, but never in the race car, just for those people that are asking. But I do know a few people it has happened to. For me, uh, it's the question, are you going to win? Yes. No, I'm just here to participate. Right. <laughs> I'm going to be one more car in the grid. That's fine. So, yeah. Yeah, are you going to win? That's a good one. Yeah, I didn't think about that one. I want to your polls. Hey, Brad, you're here. Are you going to win? Nah, not really. I mean, it's your hot oh. dogs. It's, it's the one that always make, gets me mad and makes my blood boil. It's always, did you or Elio win the Indy 500? Oh. <laughs> Actually, I can't hear really the answer to this. <laughs> Tony knows. I'm, go I'm getting out of here. If you're going to ask. <laughs> Okay, and that's going back. Well, wait, what was your answer yeah, to it? He won. He won. Yeah. He won. Okay. All right. Well, we have time, I think, for one more. Dumbest way you guys have hurt yourself. Oh, man. I think Paul's got to go first because I want to finish. Yeah, yeah, we'll go. Well, well, this, will, this, is, this will take a little while to explain, but okay. We had we were racing back in the IndyCar days when I was racing. We had a, a, a race in Australia. And then there was a race in Fontana, and then it got canceled because they had fires in Fontana. And then we had a race in Mexico City. The championship after the race got canceled was already over. Uh, Sebastian Bourdais had won the championship. We had a seven-week break between the two races. And uh, one night I was at home. I was living on this golf course in Vegas. And uh, Patrick Carpentier lived in the same neighborhood as me. And Alex Tagliani lived in the same neighborhood. And they were having a party on Halloween. And they said, come over to the party. So I come over to the party. And it was about the time, it was back in 06 or 07, when these uh, these side-by-sides came out. These Can-Ams and the Razors and all that. But this was a, a Yamaha Rhino that I had. So I drive that over to, to their house. And they're drunk as hell already at like seven o'clock at night and dressed up the tags dressed up like a clown and tag or a, tags a clown carpentier's beetlejuice and miguel duhamel the motorcycle racer was there he was dressed as a pin <laughs> they're like they're wasted they're like let's go on the golf course with the, with this side by side <laughs> bad idea yeah. right? Well, we went out on the golf course, and we ended up flipping this thing, and I ended up with a broken shoulder. Tag ended up with a concussion. We both spent the night in the hospital. Well, I broke my shoulder bad enough that I still couldn't race six weeks later. And uh, I called the team. I was trying to get back for the race, and I, I thought I had enough time. I had about three weeks to get ready, but my shoulder was broken pretty badly. And I ultimately had to call the team and said, hey, I, I, I can't race this race, my shoulder, I can't even lift my arm, you know? And uh, they're, they're like, okay. And then after the season was over, I got a, uh, my accountant said, hey, uh, by the way, you, your contract with the team is, you, you have to do 17 races, you only did 16, they're docking you $300,000 pay for, for not missing that one race. So that was an expensive party. For me, it was very simple. I love running, and one of my friends had this stupid idea. We were in the pool, 
and uh, he says, "Hey, uh, let's sprint from here to there with you know your uh, your fins, your swim fins on." <laughs> and I did, and I fell on my face, and I broke my front tooth, and I lost no. that tooth. So that's, uh, okay. Don't do that. Guys. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Didn't cost me three hundred grand. I will wrap up with Brad. Yeah, my dumbest thing I've ever done to hurt myself. Uh, 2014. I had one of my best years of my career. I'd won one, I don't know, six races or so, and uh, it's getting towards the back half of the season. And uh, Victor Lane was becoming less interesting. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, when you win a lot in one year, you're like, you hey, take for granted you sometimes. take it for granted, totally, right? And uh, so the team and I had been having conversations about how to spice up Victory Lane. And uh, we wanted to have, you know, they give the champagne bottles in Victory Lane. Was this in Kentucky? Yes. I was there that night. I, now, now I'm big, I remember that now, yes. So we wanted to have a, a champagne bottle war. And now the, the, the thing about a champagne bottle war, and I, I don't know if anybody's ever played this game, but after this maybe you'll be a little smarter than I was, you got to be the first one to get the champagne bottle open. Because if you don't get it open first, then you're getting doused before anyone else. So you got to be the first. And so I was trying to get the thing open really fast. And a champagne bottle, you know, we don't have any tools in Victor Lane. you got to open right. your hands. And I couldn't get it open. So I thought, I'll take this thing to the edge of the podium oh. and bop it. And you know, oh. I'd seen people do it like swords before. <laughs> so I thought I could do the same with the edge of the podium. And uh, oh, the, the, the top came off of it. But when it did, it, it broke the glass and sliced the end of my finger. I, I thought I had like a four-inch gouge and just blood everywhere in Victory Lane. Uh, and I had to go to Care Center. So I, I definitely lost the Amazing. champagne bottle war by one the damn race. So yeah, go to the ER room and, and uh, the, you know, the, you're walking in and you're like, all right, who are you? What happened? And you're like, I'm Brad. And like, why are you here? And they're like, well, you know, I, they think I'm here because I, I wrecked in the race, right? Like, no, 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 I won the race. <laughs> and uh, then they had to wrap me up. And that's the dumbest way I've ever gotten hurt. Remember There's that? still time to do something dumb. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't happen today. Yes. Gentlemen, good luck tonight.